Hey, happy, happy Saturday for those of you tuning in. This is Weather Sension Nazario back for another episode on Saturday, October 7th, 2023. We've officially hit the first weekend of October. Time is just flying by. We're going to kind of go over everything, give you a general overview, and talk a couple of specific features out there affecting the United States. So we're going to start west to east and work our way across the board here. If you look at the left hand side of this satellite image, you can see our trough axis getting closer and closer to impacting the Pacific Northwest coast as well as the coast line of British Columbia. The jet outlining this feature really distinctly shows us exactly how amplified of a ridge we have over western Conus. And if you look closely on the infrared satellite, you can see shades of gray swarming up from the desert southwest into the Four Corners Inner Mountain West, and that's an indication of how hot it is beneath that ridge. It's very cool how you can identify this stuff on just infrared satellite looking at temperatures. Because then if you look at the right-hand side of where I have my line drawn, you can see there are some shades of gray, but almost entirely different in terms of texture and that's the delineation between the warm air surging to the north underneath our amplified ridge as well as the cold air being sucked southward by our low pressure over the Great Lakes and that trough digging in towards the southeast United States. Over the last couple days, we've had a low parked over Quebec, Ontario, and the James Bay area of Canada, and that has since moved off to the north-northeast. You can kind of see residual moisture associated with that as this new Bear Clinic system begins to take hold over the Great Lakes, really punching in a whole dense layer of cold air. You can really see it building in, not only to the mid-Atlantic states, but beginning to edge closer and closer to the northeastern United States. This is going to be our primary contributor to all the rain and snowfall, especially we're going to see over the next couple of days once this new area begins to push into Towards the northeast coastline and that's exactly what we're going to get into here in a moment so guys i want to give you a brief picture of the atmosphere across the globe. And when I say across the globe, I mean literally every corner of the world you can possibly imagine the weather. Believe it or not, the atmosphere, Mother Nature, always wants to be at a state of rest. It wants to be in a state of equilibrium. It wants to even itself out across the planet. It's just the unfortunate nature of the beast that because of the Earth's spherical form, the Earth's rotation, things like temperature discontinuity between the ocean, underneath the ocean, things over land, land mass mass features such as rough terrain, smooth terrain, frictional forces, basic principles of physics essentially on top of the dynamics that the sun even produces on our planet given the tilt and all that fun science jazz. That's exactly why it's physically impossible for the atmosphere to go to rest, kind of just completely even itself out and essentially be at peace with the entire world figuratively. Yesterday and the day before yesterday, what we saw that really gave us a good switcheroo off the eastern coastline between Tropical Storm Philippe and this new upper level feature was just that. It was a small glimpse of the jet stream over the southern United States trying to even itself out and take that path of least resistance. I'm not going to do it here for the sake of time, but if you look over the southeast in particular in the deep south, look at how fast these clouds are moving off to the east. They're moving in rapid haste across the state of Florida into the western Atlantic. What happened was, if you recall from a few videos ago, we had the polar front jet situated over the United States like so, deepening our trough, bringing in that first wave of cold air. And and we had the subtropical jet outlining a subtropical ridge down here over the Central American landmass as well as Mexico, the southern tier United States. And what happened was as that trough continued to dig in from the north and our ridge amplified from the south, as I mentioned, with that equilibrium trying to take hold, what ended up happening, I'll switch the pen color one more time, is we had our jet break free and move due east like so. Try to take on a bit of a zonal pattern from west to east as opposed to that meridional pattern going going north, south, north, south, like so. Path of least resistance, hashtag that in your Instagram today. As a result, what ended up happening is we had that upper low, that cold pocket that broke away from the split flow, I believe Wednesday or Thursday, and Philippe traveling up towards Bermuda. Once that subtropical jet broke through the pattern, it ended up amplifying and strengthening this upper low that's now moving up into the northeastern coastline, and it essentially obliterated what was left of Philippe. Philippe kind of got like a, a right hook from Mike Tyson, if you will, from my Mike Tyson boxing fans out there once that STJ really worked its way due east. And you can see in the cloud features that that wind is really kicking up the cyclonic curvature of that upper low, spiraling it down to the surface, which is why we have that low pressure center indicated on a lot of our forecast models. So very crazy, very sudden turn of events. We weren't anticipating this and all of our forecasts kind of went upside down all of a sudden because Philippe is no longer the thing here. 
This is a new system that formed in the last, I want to say, 24 hours, at least in terms of what we see down at the surface. That cold pocket, upwards of 500 to 300 millibars, has always been there once the jet started to amplify and create all this winter, fall weather across the eastern United States. What is left of Philippe is this abundant area of moisture kicking off due east, button up against yet another trough axis over the north and central Atlantic. This is going to pose no harm or threat, and it is likely to continue to be eroded not only by that upper low system and the subtropical jet coming off the southeast coastline, but also it's going to have nowhere to go with that rigorous trough out over the Atlantic as well. In other news, we'll transition from North America down to the tropics. So we have Lydia down here. Lydia is looking pretty good. She's encountering a little bit of wind shear out there, but she's managed to fend it off pretty well. And you can see a really majestic center of circulation with a good symmetry, albeit it is slowing down because the trough in the mid-levels and the upper levels of the environment is getting ready for her to bump back and hit the reverse button and start headed towards Mexico. You can also see our Invest 99E right off the Mexico coastline really starting to amp up, getting some good thunderstorm activity associated with it as well. We're going to talk computer models with that as well because what it decides to do is going to play a key role in what we see inevitably take shape in the Gulf of Mexico. Going a little further to the east, we have that tropical wave that some of our models were trying to develop. And when I say trying to develop, we had maybe one or two ensemble members saying, hey, we could see something out of it. The icon wanted to close the center of circulation with it and create a disturbance out of it. But once that system gets going in the Gulf of Mexico, they're also going to collide and it's going to wash out and essentially just bring even more rain and precip to parts of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, and eventually central Florida. And then finally, way off to the east in the eastern Atlantic, my head might be covering it, but we have a tropical wave that is slowly but surely washing itself out. It really hasn't gone anywhere. We had some good thunderstorm activity with it yesterday, and towards the back end of this loop now, you can see that those thunderstorms are since dissipating. And then here's our next area of investigation highlighted by National Hurricane Center, really starting to get up there. It's at, I believe, a 70% chance of development over the next seven days. Because of this trough, and because of Philippe, and because of this new entity, this new frontal system, this barotropic low headed towards the northeast, it's making it very difficult for the Atlantic to reset for us to see that trademark Bermuda Azores High park itself and steer these systems as we would traditionally see during a hurricane season. As a result, this system's not going to do much of anything, and this guy, once it becomes Tropical Storm Sean potentially over the next few days, is going to kick out just to the west of the Cabo Verde Islands and dissipate once it runs headfirst into that very potent trough and cold air out over the northern Atlantic, smothering the Azores Islands, as a matter of fact, right now. All right, whoo, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a closer look at Tropical Storm Lydia. So as you can see, this is the true color visible satellite transitioning between shortwave IR overnight once we lose the sun and you can see a very wrapped up center of circulation. She's spinning, she's spinning really good. We have that iconic center of circulation, that saw blade appearance on satellite, still very, very slowly moving off to the west-northwest. She's preparing to throw it in reverse and backpedal it right towards Mexico and I do believe most of our computer models want to eject it back off in this general area. Excuse me, the satellite kind of shifted there. That's not precisely where I'm expecting it to landfall, but in that general realm there's still a little bit of spread in our ensembles. Just upstream as well, you can see our Invest 99E really starting to get going. Good thunderstorm and convective activity, albeit there is no closed, consolidated, low center just yet. It's trying its best, but you can see that that is more so encountering a lot of the shear coming off of Central America. All that high-level cirrus is whisking away off to the left, or the left-hand side, the west side of the screen, if you will. Here are the 99E computer models, and the reason I wanted to briefly touch on these, you can ignore this guy out here, the CM2. I'm not sure what that thing's doing. I mean, that's full retrograde in in comparison to what all of our other models are indicating. You can see really good consensus. You can see it'll track off to the west and northwest, at least for the first 24 hours of its life cycle. The reason I wanted to emphasize this is take a look at this split right in through here. If this does follow a bit more of a north and eventually northeastward track earlier in its lifespan, we could more than likely see what the Canadian model this afternoon, 12 Zulu, is indicating with a more potent system deepening down to a 990, maybe a 995 millibar low before punching into the panhandle of Florida maybe a little bit further to the west in terms of Mississippi, Alabama coastline. If it continues off to the north and northwest, however, we'll probably see a lot lesser impacts because it'll spend a lot more time over land, unfortunately dumping tons of rain over Mexico, instigating a good flood threat for them until our trough over the United States can pick it up, push it either across the Gulf Coast line, specifically scraping the coast, or even keeping it over the Gulf Coast states of Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, before ejecting out into the Atlantic and actually deepening down, which is indicated by a few of our models. So we're going to have to watch this closely over the next few days. It's still kind of up in the air. What's really going to happen in the Gulf? Here's a look at our 12Z GFS. We're at Wednesday of next week. I wanted to fast forward to Wednesday because this is about the
the time we're going to start seeing stuff take place. So the GFS, as a matter of fact, as I mentioned on the previous slide, has that more northerly track affiliated with this system, which is why you can see it coming out across southern Texas, already creating widespread showers and storm and likely elevated winds with it as it does so, and then moving across the Gulf Coast, really unable to organize because it's skirting the coast, dumping lots of rain, and we could see some embedded severe weather with it as well, indicated by the precip field, those yellow shades and red shades as it makes its way through the northern tier of Florida and then deepens down into something once it gets off the coastline. We're going to rewind time a little bit when we look at the 12Z Canadian model because this is a separate solution. This is a more eastward solution. So as you go through time, this is this Sunday. This is tomorrow, October 8th. You go through, you can see our entity in the eastern Pacific deepen down to a potent tropical storm before moving right into southern Mexico and then exiting into the Bay of Campeche. And you can see a much more consolidated center of circulation with this as it tries to deepen down to about a 995 millibar low before moving in towards the panhandle of Florida, right around the Pensacola, Mississippi, Alabama coastline there. And that could be a bit more of a substantial impact, at least in terms of winds and consolidated severe weather closer to its center of circulation if, of course, it takes that more eastward fetch. So that's kind of the margin of error we're looking at right now. I'll show you the euro in a moment, and it's kind of picking up on the same thing. We're looking at the 12Z euro on the left, and we have our 12Z Korean model on the right because the Korean and the euro model have actually been neck and neck in terms of how they've depicted the atmosphere, not only in this area, but across the Atlantic and the United States as well. So as you go through time, we have 12Z Euro on the left again, KMA on the right. You can see at the exact same time, we get a low spinning up in the Bay of Campeche. And the indications on both models actually almost looks like a mirror image of itself. Almost the same representation of that system on the KMA at the exact same time. As you go towards the back end of the loop, you can see it kind of sheared apart by that incoming frontal system, evacuated into the northern portions of Florida, southern Georgia, before coming out on the opposite side in the Atlantic, and we can see some further consolidation and deepening down as it continues to move off to the north and northeast, running alongside that frontal system you can finally see making its way into the picture. That's our front right there, all those shades of green and blue indicating higher winds with that cold air advection. So it could be another instance of a one-two package deal because we have that system moving across the Gulf. It's going to tremendously increase our rain chances. We're going to see embedded pockets of severe weather, localized flooding, and high winds with this as it moves through, regardless of if it's a named feature or a characterized system at that, we're still going to see some pretty potent weather with it. And then we have that really rigorous frontal system coming in, and that dense layer of cold air not only is going to evacuate the air of a lot of our moisture, it's also going to kick through with some pretty high-level wind speeds because of how dense that cold air is. It's like a wall of cooling, if you will, coming at you. And that's exactly why we're going to see not only a pressure gradient event, but also an advection or a temperature-related event, if that makes sense to you guys. And then last but not least, during my live stream, we were taking a look at a few of the long-range ensembles because the hurricane season looks a little iffy as we go forward in time. This is our 12Z GFS ensembles, and I'm only showing this right now because the Euro has not fully populated by the time I'm making this video. And you can see we have that invest area forming up in the main development region going off to the north and northwest before it finally washes out, encountering that trough axis. No harm, no foul there. The GFS ensembles in the Gulf have really backed off. Initially, it was the GFS pulling something in across the Gulf towards central Florida. Then that weaned itself down just like we saw with the Dahlia earlier this year, and the Euro started picking up a little bit more steam in its indications of something developing. Both of them are kind of in agreement at this point. We have about the same model agreement on both ensemble products, and as you can see, we do see something come off of Texas, northern Mexico, move into the Gulf Coast, really helping to increase rain chances, which is phenomenal, because I know you guys are battling those severe drought conditions right now. And then as you go towards the very end of the run, something that the Canadian model is also picking up on in terms of its ensembles and its deterministic members, you can see that there is another round of possible development coming out of the Southern and Western Caribbean. Now, this is a stretch, guys, and you can also see there's a couple of members out there in the main development region as well. I'm not going to put a whole lot of emphasis in this, and I'm not trying to cause any concern in terms of if we're going to see continuous development or eat through the last portion of our name list for the hurricane season. I'm simply mentioning that our ensembles out there may be thinking we could see something on the horizon, and I know that sounds very gray, very ambiguous, but the bottom line, the key takeaway is I'm just going to keep watching. That's all. Nothing really to investigate right now. We're still waiting to see what takes shape in the Gulf of Mexico once that energy can move across Mexico and begin to deepen down or just produce some significant weather as it gets closer to the Gulf Coast. But in the meantime, in terms of what's happening over the United States, I'm going to really dig into what happens across the Northwest into the Central Plains and eventually the East Coast of the United States because that's going to be a full-fledged plunge of all things polar air. Everyone's getting a little cold air off of that one, the entire lower 48 for that matter. 
in the tropics, we're definitely going to continue to emphasize what pops up over the next few weeks because CPC is thinking we could see an elevated risk for tropical cyclone development in our closest AORs, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. But in terms of what our models are doing realistically right now, we're not seeing too much. There is a little area of investigation that I'm highlighting myself personally off the Yucatan Peninsula where you see that conglomeration of green ensemble members right there just to the north of Costa Rica, Nicaragua, as well as the Yucatan. Yucatan Peninsula. There are some indications both on the op models and the ensembles that something might try to sneak its way into the pattern. That's a big mite because it's at the very tail end of all of our models looking 250, 300 hours out and that's probably the only area of concern I'm really going to monitor until I see otherwise. But alrighty ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and start closing out the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you all for your continued support. I can't thank you enough for that. I honestly am still awe-stricken at how the live stream went yesterday. Thank you for those of you who tuned in. Thank you for those of you who donated. It's from the most utmost sincerity I could give to you guys. I thank you from the bottom of my heart because it is for you guys that I do this channel. It is for everybody in the weather community to come together and really connect with all of our enthusiasm towards just looking at how the atmosphere operates and continuing to learn more and more as we go throughout the, you know, time. So that being said, I hope everything is great in your world. Please continue to watch what happens over the United States because everyone's going to feel the effects of this first real potent fall storm that's brewing up not only in the West but across the Great Plains as we go further into next week. And we're going to keep a close eye on what happens with the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical or not, we're going to see a lot of bad weather as we get closer to the middle parts of next week and good old Friday the 13th weekend, October 13th, looming on the horizon. Stay safe, everybody. God bless you. We'll talk to you very soon. Weather Center is going to be on pause tomorrow unless something pertinent comes up, so we'll see you again on Monday. Not only for our next full segment, but our 8 p.m. Monday night tropics talk to kind of go over what the week looks like and what you can anticipate in your neck of the woods. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.